Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates for September 6, Welcome back to Simple Cyber Defense. In this week's episode, we're going to go over eight ways that you could be inviting a, a cyber attack into your home network. So without further ado, let's begin. So what are the possible ways that you could be inviting a cyber attack into your home? Well, the first one is what's known as an invisible risk. These are risks that happen unknowingly because you're you're not thinking about it so every time you go on the internet you put your yourself and your computer at risk for all sorts of things viruses cyber attacks account takeovers you name it so how do you kind of combat the invisible risk so what you'll do is You'll just list of all the things that you use the internet for. So say you use social media, chat messages, text messages, everything that you possibly use it for. And then what you're going to do is think of all the different possible ways that an attacker could use what methods they can use to attack you. Like, for example, with email messages, there could be malicious links, malicious attachments and so on and so forth or many times Facebook Messenger will have a link coming from your friend except your friend's account has been taken over so that you click on the link then your account gets taken over and then or your computer gets virus attached to it so with these things you'll have to kind of know what the attacks are and then you'll have to do a little bit of research on how to combat that attack that uh, that attack if you have to most likely you can probably use common sense like the first thing that i would always do is if i get an attachment did i expect the attachment if i did then what I would do is then download it and then open it up in a virtual machine environment like uh, with virtual box which is free and open source and then open it there to see if anything weird happens um, another thing to do is if you get a weird message that's kind of cryptic and doesn't really sound like your friend gave it to you what you could do is just confirm that your friend sent it to you by using a different means other than what the account was used so, so for example if you got a Facebook message through messenger use text messages to message them say hey did you send this link did you send a message to me through Facebook and so on and so forth this will kind of reduce a lot of your invisible risks if you just go through each piece by piece and if you're not sure if there is an attack what you could do is just say go on online and search for whatever means that you're like social media attacks or email attacks and then you'll see if there are a lot of tactics that cyber criminals are using like SMS messaging attacks and things and so on and so forth so that you can get to know okay these are the things that are going to happen or possibly happen to me if I'm not careful enough and then go through the ways to kind of mitigate those risks you can't eliminate the risk altogether but at least with through this education process you'll kind of become more aware of these risks and then you'll be able to make more educated decisions on how what's the acceptable level that you're you have so the next 
kind of a attack or not attack but next thing is what's called culture disconnect so what this is unless you're a security minded person like myself and have m many years in the security industry you're just not going to be very knowledgeable in this area so this is where research is very important and kind of to teach yourself how to be more mindful for the security risks that you're going to take on because everything that involves the internet has a potential risk to it even if it's just minor or it could be major but either way there are risks out there and the best thing to do is just to kind of go out there and seek information like the best source is this podcast that you're listening to right now i do my best to research all the different attacks and try to help you find ways to mitigate these risks but there are many other resources out there like uh, many hacker groups that for they go out there to educate people rather than attack people uh, i will leave a list of different resources in the show notes or the description below if you really need to have some but that's another way to do it so another method is what's known as throwing money at the problem so what this means is that you're just spending money in hopes for all these different tools and fancy gadgets and hope that this will keep me safe and protected but unfortunately not always sometimes it will bring you a false sense of security because if the tool that you're using isn't properly implemented or up to date or has a flaw in it you can easily have a malicious attacker come through and go through the hole or go through the holes that that is there and you end up getting an attack and you're like why what happened i had antiviruses i had firewalls i had all these tools that should have just stopped everything but again all the amount of tools in the world won't stop every attack so you just have to be a little bit smart about it um not saying that these tools can't help but they're just not foolproof you just have to understand how they are used and the limitations of them so that you can balance out the tools together so that you can get a more layered approach like tools are just one step of, of it the next step would be education or mindsets or habits or different things that layer together to be security as layers rather than just buying all the latest and greatest and just throwing it together and just hope that it works the next one is security as a defender what this means is creating security as a way to block everything um like i said security shouldn't be especially cybersecurity isn't a foolproof thing you're not going to be able to stop everything so the best thing to do is to learn how to balance the needs to protect your data with what you need to do to use the internet because the only way that you're going to completely stop any attacker from ha from hacking your system is to completely isolate it from the internet 100 percent of the time and that's not going to be very functional because it's going to be very limited what you can use that computer for in some situations it may be the best thing to do like if you are doing things that do not require the internet then definitely take it offline and, and then use a different computer to do your online stuff on so that you can keep that separations but if you do need the internet then 
just learn how to balance the risks so that you don't fall into the trap of trying to build this perfect security wall that will block everything because it's impossible to block everything unless you completely isolate yourself from the internet okay so the next one is broken accountability what this is means is that you don't always put the blame on the correct situation you may just say oh it's not my fault because this person did this or that person did that what really needs to happen is you need to really learn, okay, I am responsible for my computer. I am responsible for my data. I'm responsible for this. I should not rely 100% on someone else to protect me. Granted, you may shift some of that responsibility to other vendors like Google or others, like an antivirus program, but don't rely on them completely saying okay i'm my hands are washed clean because this product here is supposed to protect me in some ways yes they you are right but in a lot of it in the end of the day security really lands on your feet if you want to protect if you want your data to be protected you are the one that's ultimately responsible for protecting the data and you have to make sure that you fully vet the companies that you are trusting and also learn how to use the tools that they are giving you and also understand the risks behind it because some tools if put together make a bigger risk than just using one of the tools or none of the tools so just remember that at the end of the day you are the only one fully responsible for your security the other companies are just there to make money and ultimately if you've seen the news and all the data breaches mostly they don't care about your privacy or protecting your data because they just feel like okay I can just throw money at the problem and I don't have to worry about it or I have insurance to cover me for any lawsuits that may happen because of it and it's kind of a sad state that we live in but Again, we need to be ultimately responsible for our own data. So the next one we're going to talk about is poorly informed risk appetites. So what this means is that you're out there trying to eliminate all the risks and avoid everything that will that will put you at a risk unfortunately that's not very appropriate that's not very reasonable you have to accept some risks in order to use the internet and going online i'm not saying that going online will be 100% risk or that you will get attacked 100% of the time no I'm just understand that you have to be kind of realistic on what kind of risk level that you should expect and then that kind of folds into the next topic which is unrealistic social expectations what this means is that the expectations that everyone's going to get attacked or my data is already out there so why should I worry about it yeah you should worry about it because the more data that's out there the easier it is to have your identity stolen or to have more attacks happen to you because attackers once they see that they can make money they'll continue attacking over and over and over again and we have to create a more mindset a better mindset that that even though my data is out there i'm going to still try to protect myself 
and I'm going to learn from the mistakes or I may not or I may learn from like hey I'm not going to trust company x with my data if I can because sometimes it is out of our hands but that doesn't mean that we're completely hopeless and out of and that we can't have any control over our security and that's not true we are 100 percent able to control the security of our daily lives and our computers and everything that we have within our controls now we may have to sacrifice some things and make things more difficult for us to use but it is possible to increase our security so don't don't fall into the mindset of oh it's gonna happen i can't stop it so it doesn't matter it does matter a lot and so the last thing is the lack of transparency this is more towards the other companies because many times the companies do get breached and they're not a hundred percent honest with you and that is a very very huge risk that you can't control and it's very sad that these companies are getting away with such things granted there are some new laws that are coming into place that's kind of trying to limit these types of lack of transparencies like in in europe many companies will have to uh, disclose their data breach within 72 hours the u.s is starting somewhat to catch up and some states are creating such laws but i think for the most part companies are able to get away with a lot more than they should and so the the thing you should realize is you shouldn't expect the companies to tell you okay this data breach happened what i recommend is to go to have i been pwned or to some of these like Firefox monitoring services or even a paid monitoring identity theft monitoring service which will monitor these accounts for you and alert you when a breach happens I know with Firefox monitoring they if you give your if you give them their email address your email address they will tell you where which data breaches that that email appears in if you go to have i been pwned and even put in your password or your email address and i think telephone numbers now and they'll tell you which data breaches that they're appearing and a lot of them are not in the news so you may not even know that they are have appeared in data breaches and so that's a good way to kind of combat that lack of transparency is to do some due diligence and research on your end and just take a little bit of time every now and then probably like six months or so to see okay are there any new data breaches that has my data in it and if they are find out what data breaches were involved and then research kind of what happened and what's the impact of it and then kind of create a game plan from there so with that said these are the eight different ways different things that you could unknowingly create a situation that will allow an attacker to openly attack you now if you uh, take these threats very seriously and listen to this podcast you will be able to create a game plan and to be able to better protect yourself so if you want an, a video or a podcast or a tutorial on how to do a risk assessment on your on your on your devices and whatnot just leave a comment on on this uh 
on here and I'll read it and then if there are if, if there's enough interest then I will create that that information for you now always remember that security is ultimately your responsibility and if there is things that you want to learn you can always go to simplecyberdefense.com and there's a tab that allows you to put in topic suggestions so that I will know okay these people these people want to learn more about X topic so that I can create more content more geared toward what you want so if I don't know what you want to learn then I'm not going to be able to do it and then you may get frustrated and we don't want that so if you have a topic that you want to learn just leave a suggestion and I'll read it and if it's good enough I will or if there's a high enough interest in it I will definitely create a video or tutorial or a podcast episode or try to find an interview or something to get that information to you so with that said I'll see you in the next episode stay safe Thanks for listening to the Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates. Join us next time when we dive into more security issues and make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Plus, if you have a topic suggestion or want to support the podcast, stop by our website at simplecyberdefense.com.